Well, hello, and welcome back to Vanarchism. So, I am uh, back in the southwest again. In fact, uh, as I speak right now, just outside of Tucson, in the Ironwood Forest National Monument, which is kind of over there. Uh, this is BLM land, so I'm staying here for free. I've been here for a couple days, and I'll probably be here for one more night, I think, before I have to go back to Tucson and get food. Why I'm in Tucson at all is because I started to have some transmission problems in the van, and um, if I'm going to be stuck somewhere, I would rather be stuck someplace warm and where I have some resources available. And so I came back to Tucson, and uh, this coming week we'll get the van looked at and kind of see where things are. Um, you know, as always, I have very little money, so if it requires too much, I won't be able to do anything, and we'll have to come up with another plan. But uh, one of the requests I got was uh, to show what's in the library inside the van. Uh, the library is right there. Now, the library has changed, actually, because it used to be three cubby holes. Um, but I actually kind of I reworked things inside the van a bit and to get some more space uh, reduced it to one plus there's a few more books under the cot. So I'll show you what I've got with me and uh, tell you about why on today's episode. Let's go. <laughs> A few extra minutes have passed since I recorded that intro because when I finished recording I looked down and I saw that my right hand was uh, covered in blood on one side. <laughs> I had scratched myself on something getting out of the van, maybe part of the stove or something. And I just, I felt a little scratch but didn't see anything and then by the time I finished recording that intro I bled quite a bit. So I have a first aid kit and uh, I got some uh, uh, cleaning ointment and uh, band-aid and all that kind of stuff, so I'm not going to bleed out here in the desert, but uh, it's taking me a couple extra minutes to get to this bit. Okay, so now let's look at part one of the library. So my thinking where the library was concerned was to try to bring things um, that I would go back to multiple times um, so that, you know, I wasn't just bringing, like, I have a Kindle too, even though I don't use Amazon, but I get the books elsewhere and put them on the Kindle. Um, so I can use that for kind of disposable reading, but for stuff that I kind of want to go back to again and again, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to bring in physical form. So if we take off this little, whoops, got to take off this little uh, lid here first, otherwise he will crash to the ground. And we take out the uh, little dowel, and then we can uh, kind of get close and see what we've got. So this is the complete works of Shakespeare. Um, I'm a huge Shakespeare fan and could, really couldn't see going anywhere without these. I initially brought a bunch of solo volumes, but right before I left Tucson, I decided that was too much. So I just brought this one volume collection. Um, I love Matsuo Basho, um, Japanese poet and Zen practitioner and travelogue writer. So this is one of his most famous works, Narrow Road to the Interior. Um, a book by uh, Zen teacher Dainin Katagiri called The Light That Shines Through Infinity, which I haven't read yet and uh, definitely want to, so I brought that with me. Also, um, two works by um, Koto Sawaki, or, you know, kind of collections of his teaching, another Zen teacher. Um, this one I have read, The Zen Teaching of Homeless Koto, and it's one of my favorites. And then a new book, Discovering the True Self, just came out. I brought a uh, Penguin collection of haiku. Uh, my two favorite tarot books, um, Oliver Pickles' She is Sitting in the Night and Michelle T's Modern Tarot. The Complete Poems of Allen Ginsberg, which I've read some of but not all. Um, Emerson's Nature and Thoreau's Walk, uh, kind of in one volume. Oh, and this little guy here is a tablet that I use to read comic books. Um, I haven't done that yet on this trip, but I do often. So now we'll go to the other side of this shelf, which is easier to look at from the inside of the van. Okay, so there are three parts to my library. This is the flip side of the shelf we were just looking at, the cubby hole on the outside. Um, this is the original 1855 version of Leaves of Grass, um, one of the most important things to me. This is actually a copy of my own book, um, Unexpected Sunlight, the book that came out in 2010. Uh, this is a book called The Sighted Singer, um, which is a book about poetry that was recommended to me during one of my jazz session interviews and uh, which I have kind of been digging into on and off. 
This is a book I got while I was on the road, actually, it got mailed to me, um, called Civilization in Crisis, and I have a poem in here, which is why it's there. This is the exercise booklet of Kowasi Balagoon, who was a Black Liberation Army fighter here and a political prisoner in the U.S. Uh, this is the USA Trilogy by John Dos Passos, which I've always wanted to read. I, you might remember that uh, kind of last year and earlier this year, I started reading a ton of stuff about World War I, if you followed me on my personal account back in the day, that kind of thing, you might know that. And um, this is... Uh, he was at the time a radical author, although he became much more conservative as his days went on. Uh, so this is an example of a thing I might not go back to, but I really liked this kind of bound volume and wanted to keep it. Uh, Shobogenzo, translated into English as the treasury of the true Dharma eye. These are the teachings of Dogen, who um, probably among the most important of Zen's philosophers and teachers. Uh, this is All a Dream We Dreamed is an oral history of the Grateful Dead, which I'm partway through. Um, How to Be Well is a book that my friend Emma, who you might remember I traveled with a little bit, um, gave to me, uh, and I ha have yet to start, um, although some things that she told me from it I have put into practice, um, but I need to keep actually digging into it. This is my favorite poetry anthology, The Voice That Is Great Within Us. Uh, it was put together by Hayden Carruth in the 70s. Very funnily, um, this, for whatever reason, I don't know why this book is on the inside now, but it was on the outside before. And when I was in Auburn, um, I ran into my friend Ken Autry, who is a, a poet and I, who actually runs the poetry series there that I started back in 2012. He took it over when I left. And he saw this book, um, which he also likes, and he said, oh, funnily enough, and we were on uh, Gay Street in Auburn, uh, where my friend Patrick lives, and where Ken also lives very close to there. And he said, oh, well, just a couple houses down the street, actually, uh, Hayden Carruth's grandson lives. So it's a small world, but I wouldn't want to paint it, as Stephen Wright said. Now, I did try to get the library down just to this. Plus, um, I, this is my Kindle, this is my journal, and my poetry notebook. I did try to get it down just to that, but um, I left a bunch of books at my friend Patrick's house in Auburn, which I will deal with at some point, and like a bunch, meaning one crate, the other, the things that were in the other two cubby holes here. Um, but I didn't leave all of them, so I have one more place where I have a few books hiding. It's probably kind of windy. I'm going to set this inside the van a little bit. Maybe it'll block out the wind. Um, so there is one more place where I have some books hidden, and that is below the cot here. So probably I can swing this around, and if we duck down, there's a bin here, and uh, this bin has some more stuff in it. So let's take a look at what's in there. All right, so this is last year's journal, which at some point I will put with all my other notebooks and stuff at my sister's house in upstate New York. I gave her a bin full of my old poetry notebooks, so I didn't lose those. Uh, this is my book journal, <laughs> as is made obvious by the title, but I record the books that I read in here. Uh, this is an anthology I really love, uh, Big Sky Mind, Buddhism and the Beat Generation. It's a collection of poems and writings by beats who were influenced by Buddhism or practitioners of Buddhism. Uh, this is the first book of poetry I ever bought, uh, a collection of W.H. Uh, Alden poems, or I guess technically a selection of W.H. Alden poems. Uh, what else we got down here? This is my favorite living poet, Albert Goldbarth and the Kitchen Sink, which is new and selected poems of his. Um, a great book about the aftermath of Katrina and the anarchists who helped in the aftermath called Black Flags and Windmills by Scott Crow. Uh, one of two volumes um, by uh, Abdullah Oshalan, uh, or about, like, in conversation with him, and I think the other is essays about him, from uh, the fine folks at PM Press, um, kind of about the new uh, Kurdish society being built along anarchist principles. Um, being Upright, this is uh, the book that I was using when I was working on receiving the precepts um, with a teacher in Pen Pennsylvania. <clears throat> Not something I'm working on at the moment um, because of where I am, but um, it's a useful book and I hope to get back to it. Uh, another bit of Basho, um, another translation of one of the same books and then some additional writings of his. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is a collection of um, haiku that was uh, kind of challenging to get and I'm happy that I have. 
Um, this James Lowen is the guy who wrote the all those books about uh, lies my teacher told me and stuff like that. The like mistaken history books. This came from PM Press. Um, I don't think I would have purchased it if, I, but I was a subscriber for a while, and you got all their books. And it looks kind of cool, and I'm traveling, so I thought it might be nice to have along. I think we're almost done here. Oh yeah, this the Sociology of Freedom. This is another Oshalon Abdullah Oshalon collection. And what else we got? Oh, Seeds from a Birch Tree. This is, if you are interested in haiku and writing haiku, this is the single best book I can recommend. Seeds from a Birch Tree Birch Tree by Clark Strand. It's really wonderful. And then I've got a few other things in here. Some of these might be interesting. And so, oh, this is a book about dealing with diabetes that I got from my doctor. Uh, these are uh, Rochester Zen Center's chants and recitations, things that they do there at the center. Uh, this is the same thing, but from the Oon um, Zen Center in Julianne, Pennsylvania. And then this, uh, for years, every year, I used to put on a live reading of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. And so this is the 1855 version broken down section by section because it was one reader per section when we used to do those live readings, which I would love to do again. So I brought that with me in case I ever stage another one of those. And the only other thing that's in here uh, is a Grateful Dead show from Portland, 72672 from my friend Jake. So that's the library inside the van. Thanks so much for watching. Um, it's been a challenging week. Uh, I found out that uh, there were some problems with the van, and then um, there's a bunch of dune buggies going by. So you can see them. Uh, found out there was a problem with the van, kind of raced across the country to get back to the southwest, which is where I am now. And uh, this week we'll find out hopefully what's wrong with the van, what it's going to cost you know, how in God's name I'm possibly going to fix it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, a lot of things coming up in my life that are unanswered questions at this point. But uh, thank you to everyone who has supported the journey so far, including all of these fabulous people. Uh, you can become one of these supporters and you'll get uh, essays and exclusive photos and videos and things like that. Um, just go to patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.